Good morning. Good morning. Wow. What a week we've had here at Calvary. We had 20 little guys, well, sort of little guys, some were sort of big guys, that signed up for Vacation Bible School. Between 18 and 20 kids came each day to, wow. from yeah. Monday to Friday. And alpacas were the hit of the week. Rocky Balboa was one, and the party crasher was the other. He was born in the middle of a birthday party. That's what they told us. The kids got to feed them, pet them, and feel their fur, or fiber, as Dorothy would have them say. And Miss Dorothy, would you like to tell them how the alpacas rode? The alpacas went home in the back seat of the truck. We want to thank Sarah Wood, who was the director of Vacation Bible School, for all of the time and effort she put into organizing, substituting for all the volunteers that couldn't make it every day. And just to thank her from the bottom of our hearts for doing it. And we also want to thank all of our volunteers that were here each and every day, they sang, they told stories, they did crafts and snacks and science and gym time, and several are out here today. They even had enough energy to come back to church on Sunday. Our youth volunteers were awesome. It was a great week to be here. So we thank everyone for helping and organizing and don't forget the fund for alpacas. We have a foundation that uh, Sarah found that will buy one alpaca for a South American country for the poor uh, families there that they will be able to feed and use in do whatever else they do with alpacas in South America. But we're not finished yet. We have another event coming up, and Val would like to tell you a little bit about it. Thanks, Bobby. Good morning. So I know everybody, I hope everybody's having a good time this summer, uh, maybe going on vacation, maybe sitting on ice, hopefully, today. But what we're going to be doing is having a family game night. So we want to invite you guys out, all ages, um, the little ones, the little ones, they might have a good time, but we're thinking a little bit older might enjoy this more, but everyone is welcome, and you guys are too. So <laughs> <laughs> everybody at home listening too, bring some friends, you know, you have neighbors, outs anybody outside of the church uh, community as well. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to have it here back in the uh, assembly room, and we're going to have a few little games outside. Hopefully it, the weather is permitting. Um, but we're going to really enjoy each other's company, and that's the point. We want to get out, uplift each other, have an encouraging time. And we're going to have all different kinds of games, table games, some group games, get together. And you guys have done this before. Charades, Pictionary, it'll be awesome. I promise you, you're going to have a good time. Come on out. Oh, you might want to know when it is. Friday, August 19th, and that starts at 5.30 to 8.30. Thanks, Val. There are directories, brand new directories, out in the North X. You may pick up 
on your way out. And one last thing I will tell you now, rather than waiting, uh, Nancy Doldy was in the hospital this week. David evidently had come home and um, was doing all of the things for her. Um, she is out of the hospital, and she's in care one in Morristown right now. So I don't know any more than that. This just came from Nedra this morning. So if you have a card, send it to Nancy. I'm sure she'd be happy to get one. And now we want to welcome Reverend Rob Morrison to our pulpit today. Thank you, sir. A friend of the church and of mine, and we want to welcome him today and next week. And those Phillies, Rob, uh, <laughs> they didn't do too well this week. But. No, no, they did terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to keep the faith. All right. <laughs> is in your bulletin. You can follow along with me. It's from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Our gathering hymn is 103, Ye Servants of God, Your Master. Let us worship.
we're about to have the offering, and it's a time of thanksgiving, a time of being grateful. I'm really very, very grateful for this church. This is the church where I grew up, okay? You folks, your grandparents, your parents, your friends, your relatives, all were volunteers here, all helped. And, and uh, I've got to tell you, as a child, I, I sat right back there with my parents and my grandmother. And some Sundays, it would get awfully long. And I, I got restless. So I said to my mother and father, oh, mom, I, I got to go to the bathroom. She said, okay, go ahead. And I go out here and I would wander around, wander around until I thought that the sermon was over. Well, I hope you don't do that today. In any case, we do want to give thanks for this church. We want to give thanks for all the people in Vacation Bible School. I know how important Vacation Bible School is. My wife, Kathy, is working on it right now. And, and uh, the church where I'm at in Jackson will have Vacation Bible School uh, later on in August. I know how important your work is in the choir singing here. And so I want to thank uh, Jerry here for working with me and getting all the slides together again. It truly is a joy to be here, and it's a joy to have my wife and a good friend here, Jerry Davidson. Jim, congratulations on your grandchild. If any of you want to see his new grandchild, he's got a very nice picture, okay? In any case, in any case, we give thanks to Almighty God for all our blessings, for all our loved ones, and now... Let us have our morning offering. God, we dedicate this offering to your work, to your will, and to all those in need. We ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you now to take out your Bibles, or you can look in the bulletin. In the bulletin is the story of, of Ruth, and uh, in your Bibles, 
if you were to look there as well, you'd see the whole story. It's on page 241 in your Bibles. And ironically, uh, this story or the setting of the story corresponds with a world crisis that I'm going to be talking about because it begins with a famine in Israel, a famine where the people had to go from Judea, that is Israel, to Moab. And that's where our story begins today from the uh, book of Ruth, the second chapter, verses 5 to 12. Hear the word of God. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, the reapers for the harvest, to whom does this young woman belong? The servant who was in charge of rivers answered, She is the, the Moabite who came with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, Please, let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the rivers. So she came, and she has been on her feet early this morning until now. Without resting even even for a moment. Sounds like a lot of the women in this church who work all day. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter, do not glean another field or leave this one, but keep close to the young women. Keep your eyes on the field that is being reaped and follow behind them. I have ordered the young men not to bother you. If you get thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. Then, then Ruth fell prostrate with her face to the ground and said to him, Why? Why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me Take me of me when I am a foreigner. But Boaz said to her, All that you have done for your mother in law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me, and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know. May the Lord reward you for your deeds, and may you have a full reward from the Lord, the God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. This is the word of the Lord. Now I invite you to turn to the uh, Gospel of Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 35 to 38. Jesus is out with his disciples in ministry, going from town to town, and uh, he's, he's reaching out in compassion. Hear the word of God. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and help us like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sharing of joys and concerns, you're going to help me here. Sheila McMenamin expected to be here today to say this herself, but she was rear-ended by a careless driver on Friday. Sheila's okay, but her car is undrivable. But she asked me to extend her thanks to Allison Farnan, Kathy Hader, Judy Zapisic, and Linda Blackman for cutting out all the little Moseses for all the crafts she did during VBS. 
Thank you, Leah. I want to ask for prayers for um, the Heck family. Um, Bob Heck passed away a few years ago, and his family doesn't live too close now, but his youngest, his middle daughter, Nancy, was married to a guy named Earl, and he died on Monday. He was um, battling throat cancer. So prayers for the Heck family. They're all together in Florida, helping each other out through this time. I just wanted to thank everyone. My husband, Steve, had two heart attacks in a month. Um, finally got the medication. His doctor said everything is good. We are actually getting back to life, and I can come back to church. So I'm very thankful. Good. I hope you take a note of all the prayer requests here and joys. There was a day and age when I could know every one of your names, and I could tell who you're talking about, but I don't have a clue now. <laughs> anyway, please remember those people in prayer that have been mentioned, and look at your bulletin, please. Take your bulletin now. And look in the bulletin there for the prayers. Prayers for our president, who has COVID, unfortunately, and our elected officials, our world leaders, men and women in uniform, peace in the world, victims of natural disasters, those endangered by war and violence, Calvary's mission and ministries, all our friends at Calvary and in particular. Now, Ron Blackaby, I know Ron. Um, Ron, if you're out there, online. Um, I know you're from high school, okay? And uh, uh, also Linda Blackman, Joanne Davis, Savannah, and Anthony Valancier. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. Ed Gilmore, Ned Gilmore, Ed Hartman, Beth Lippincott, Jean Marcoats, Jesse Jones, nephew Terry Powell, Maria Sabatino, wife of Alex Reinhardt, Barbara DeSimone, and Jay Peddle, friends of Alex Reinhardt, Steve Harker, husband of Cindy Harker, and uh, my good friends, uh, Barry and June Emmons, who are on vacation. Barry and June, come back soon. I want to see you. And uh, all the others as well who are in need. We extend our prayers, and I'm going to ask you to, uh, if you would like to take your phone and text one of these people. Maybe you have a friend or relative, and you can say that we are remembering you in prayer right now. So we're going to take a time of silence, and then we're going to do the Lord's Prayer. We're going to sing the Lord's Prayer. Good. And uh, so in the time of silence, this is the time of all of our prayers, of all of our prayers. So you can text somebody, phone somebody, and uh, that will be a way of letting people know online that we're thinking of you and caring for you. Let us pray. Here are now our prayers for each other and for our concerns and for the world peace and for your world in silence. Lord God, hear all our prayers now and as we sing the Lord's Prayer.
it's going to be a great day. Well, it's going to be a great day. We're going to dance and shout and sing. We're going to bow down to the king. There's going to be a great day coming soon. and celebrating the Lord's harvest with that kind of a music and that kind of a song, you did well. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord God, open our minds, our hearts, and our lives to thy word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you today about uh, growing the Lord's harvest. Growing the Lord's harvest in a time of crisis. In a time of crisis, because while we all are very much aware of the economy and inflation and gasoline prices, there really are three crises that I would like for us to concentrate on. The first is the crisis of the world, that there is hunger, that there is hunger around the world because one of the main sources of grain in Ukraine cannot get its grain out to the countries that need it. On a community basis, there is a crisis because COVID is still with us. Fact, I know that to be certain. My wife knows that to be certain. My good wife knows that to be certain because we have planned a 51st wedding anniversary cruise with all our family. We have saved our money and we are ready to go. And five days before we were to leave, yours truly came down with COVID. I was not a very popular person in our family nor with my wife. But despite all of that, we know that COVID is real. It is a part of the crises that I would like for us to think about. Now, on a church basis, there's a crisis because attendance is down. In Jackson and other churches that I've been to, there are less children who are going to Sunday school or going to church. I am, however, very glad that you had a great vacation Bible school of having about 20 children there. That's terrific. But I say a crisis because there are less people in church today than there were when I was growing up. Now, the crisis like this, you can respond in, in a variety of ways, but maybe you respond maybe with anxiety. Maybe you re respond with fear. Maybe you 
respond with panic, and maybe you're like chicken little and kind of go, oh, 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 and you go around and say, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Well, that could be one response. But I, I want you to think about another response as well. I want you to think about the harvest where God gives us a harvest. A harvest in the same way of food, yes, but also a harvest in people who are looking for and caring for others. So I want you to look at two paintings here, two Van Gogh paintings. I, I'm a real big fan of Van Gogh. I want you to look first at the uh, painting here, Harvest at the Crawl. Now you may have that brought up on your phones too. And you could do that because in this painting by Van Gogh of the harvest, you can look carefully and you can find seven workers. Now, I know it may be hard at first to find them, but they're there. Seven people who are working the harvest, who are bringing in the crops. Now, when you look at the second painting, this is the painting of the harvest of Provence. Here, you have all the wheat and all the hay, and there's only one person there. There's only one worker. And that's the truth of the matter throughout all of our crises. That unfortunately, there is a lack of workers, a lack of laborers to get in the harvest. In um, Ukraine, we need more than one nation to ship out the grain. Maybe you've been following the news, and you follow the news of how the United Nations, Turkey, and Russia, and Ukraine are trying to work together and had signed a deal to open the ports in Odessa to get grain out to the hungry people. Uh, but the Russians uh, they just began to send missiles yesterday to Odessa. The only thing I can say is that it takes more than one country, more than one group of people to bring in the harvest. It takes a cooperation of the United Nations, of Turkey, of Ukraine, and Russia. Now, on a community basis, on a community basis as far as COVID is concerned, yeah, I'd like to think that COVID is done with, huh? But when I had COVID, I, I realized that my wife and I had to stay apart. And I had to wear a mask and I do all kinds of things of social distancing. Fortunately, fortunately for me and fortunately for my family, fortunately for my well-being, for my well-being, my wife Kathy did not get COVID. <laughs> because COVID is real. Huh? Huh. Yes, in the community, in our churches, we need more than one person more than one group of people to work the Lord's harvest. Notice I say the Lord's harvest. This harvest is not just for me, me to kind of keep to myself or me to kind of glorify myself. This harvest is one of shalom, one of healing, one of compassion for all people. God's harvest includes food, includes people caring for each other and helping each other in need. That's the story. That's the story of Ruth and Naomi. Both their husbands had died. They were, they were grief-stricken. Naomi goes back to Bethlehem in Israel, and Ruth Ruth could have stayed 
in Moab, in her native land. But she goes back with Naomi to take care of her. It's amazing how, how the Bible shows us how a, a foreigner, a widow, a person like Ruth could have compassion and go back to help her mother-in-law, Naomi. I want you to listen again to the words that were in the uh, scripture when uh, Boaz, one of the uh, kinsmen of Naomi, gives this praise to Ruth. I know all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother in Moab and came with Naomi to a people you never knew. Ruth in her diligence, Ruth in her loyalty, Ruth in her faith, reaped a bountiful harvest, not only for her family then, for Naomi and for herself. She reaped a bountiful harvest because she married this man, Boaz, and her grandchildren and grandchildren and grandchildren, and grandchildren ultimately were Mary and Joseph and Jesus. So Ruth is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Of course, now, uh, the life that we have, as we think about Ruth, it is never easy. I was impressed as I was doing my homework for this message about an artist by the name of, of, of James Sunt. Even back in 1850, he wanted to lift up women. Now, oftentimes, I know that you who are here as women don't get the credit you deserve. I'm not just saying that in a way of patronizing you. I know it's true. If you look at this painting here, this is a painting in 1850, this man was aware that at the time, then and forevermore, women had to have courage. And this painting is called Courage, Anxiety, and Despair. And the woman to the left here is one of courage. She reminds me of Ruth. And she reminds me of so many women who are willing to take the initiative to reach out, to have courage. It takes people like Ruth, it takes people like in this painting here of courage to take the initiative, to be proactive, to invite, encourage people to be partners in Christ. I guess it took a lot of a uh, Courage for you to recruit people for vacation Bible school. Now, who was the person who recruited them all? Yeah. Well, it, it takes courage to invite people, to ask people, to help. Say, I would like you to be a part of our vacation Bible school. Because the harvest of Jesus Christ is not a one-woman show. It is not a one-man show. It takes all kinds of people to help. It takes all kinds of people to be in the Lord's harvest. Uh, some people might wonder about that fact of, gee, I, I really can't help. I, I can't do that much. And I remember in my last church in Jackson, a man named Bob Benden. Bob had had a, a, a stroke, and, and he really couldn't talk that much. So what do you think he could do? Well, Bob, Bob volunteered to be our greeter, to hand out bulletins. And each Sunday, with a smile on his face, he could say, well, well, welcome. And everybody in the church loved the way he was so compassionate and welcoming. He was one person, like many of yourselves, who could do a part of God's work in the harvest. We are called to reach out and help others. Jesus 
could not do it alone. He needed his disciples. He needed everyone to work the harvest, to be supportive, caring for our neighbors. I believe that you and I are called to reach out in a variety of ways, to write letters, to send emails, text messages, whatever ways we can to pray for each other. Recently, uh, in the church where I'm at, at in Jackson, one of the young men was in ROC, ROTC and went to summer camp, and people in the church wrote letters to him. He wrote back to me and said, Rev. Rob, what a joy to hear my name called at mail call. And, and my name we called every day because the people in the church wrote me every day. Well, fine, he said to himself. But he looked around and he found out there were six, six of his buddies who never got any mail at all, never remembered by anybody. And so, so he, he wrote back to me and wrote back to the people in the church and said, hey, here's the address of six of my friends, six of my friends who are going to go off in the military eventually because now they're in summer camp, six of my buddies who, who feel lonely. Could you write them a letter? Could you write them a note? Could you tell these men that we care? that we appreciate their service to our country. Now think about that. Here is a young man, 19 years old. A lot of men at 19 years old are, are thinking about, hey, thinking about me, thinking about my career, and thinking about girls, and, and thinking about anything else but your friends who are lonely. But yet he did. He wanted them to be remembered. What a fine act of compassion. The harvest of God in Jesus Christ needs all kinds of workers. We're called to welcome people, to have breakfast with people, to give out brochures and business cards, to walk our neighborhoods and greet our neighbors. When I go through my neighborhood, I, even when it's hot, like today, I've, uh, rolled down my window and waved to people, said hello. Because we are good neighbors, because we are in this together. I'm also impressed about the friends of mine who are writing letters and calling people who are in grief and sadness. My crowd of friends has had a tough time because uh, two friends have uh, committed suicide, and uh, that's tough, very tough. But what I think is important here in the time of grief is to go and pray for each other. And I'm grateful for the prayers that we get together on Zoom, very grateful, that we have the courage to say, hey, we're not ashamed to pray, we're not ashamed to pray, we're going to pray for those who are in grief and sadness. We are going to care for those in need. In other words, in other words, you and I are called to reach out not just one time, but many times to many people. Everyone, everyone needs reminders to reach out. Everyone needs reminders. Everyone needs reminders. Just ask my wife about me. And she'll tell you that I need many reminders that I forget. Of course, I'd like to think I don't forget that much, but I do. Now, in, remind, in marketing and in business, we all need many reminders. In business and in marketing, they say six, six reminders before it sticks. Six before it sticks. In the church, we need to be able to say seven, seven reminders. Seven reminders before you get to heaven. Seven before heaven. What I'm 
trying to say to you is this, that during this time of crisis, crisis in our world, crisis with COVID, crisis in our communities, we need each other. Now that sounds so very, very true, and it is true. But we need not only to say we need each other, we need to pray that the Lord God will send us out to each other, to reach out. For the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray then to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When I talk about the, uh, you thought I was over, didn't you? I still had seven minutes. We're going to carry on with the harvest and the compassion of Jesus Christ with a balm in Gilead. Hymn number 611 in your hymn book and on the screen, there is a balm in Gilead. in Gilead. 
There is healing in God's spirit. And there is a great harvest which needs every one of us, each one of us here, at home, or wherever. There is a bomb in Gilead. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Go now out into the world to ask and pray for workers for the harvest. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The